Well, hi there, boys and girls. We're going to go over some AP applications of derivatives. And this is a very common question on the free response part of your AP exam. You'll be given a table. And you have to do some investigation and interpretation. So let's just get started with some examples. I've got water that's flowing into a tank over a 24-hour period. The amount of water in the tank is modeled by a differentiable function, W, for 0 to 24. T is measured in hours, that's in the table here, and W of T, that's like the Y value for T, is measured in gallons. Values of W of T at selected values of time T are shown in the table below. Let's take a look at this paragraph and take some very important information out from it. This word right here, differentiable, we should know what that means. We practiced that for a couple of days. Graphically, it means it is continuous, for sure. Remember, differentiability implies continuity. No sharp turns, no vertical tangent lines. That also tells us that this is a continuous graph. Use the data in, table, in the table to find W of A. This means the Y value of A. Using appropriate units, explain the meaning of your answer. Well, this is rather easy. We come to the table at 8, W of 8 is 221. Now, using appropriate units, explain the meaning of your answer. So what does this mean? What is the 221? Well, it's gallons. Gallons where? In the tank. When? When time t equals 8. So explain the meaning, full sentence. This means that there are 221 gallons of what? Of water. Where? In the tank. And then when, when t equals 8. That is you explaining your answer with appropriate units. Not too bad, You've got to write a sentence. Part B, use the data in the table to find w to the negative 1. This means w inverse at 257. Remember for inverse functions, if a function f travels through a comma b, then f inverse has to travel through b comma a. So I'm going to use that notation. So you can write that down, but I have to erase it because I'm running out of space. All right, so W inverse of 257 means go backwards from Y back to X, or from, in this instance, gallons back to T. W inverse of 257 would be equal to 12. We're going backwards from basically Y to X. Using appropriate units, explain the meaning of your answer. There are... 257 gallons of what? Of water. Where? In the tank. When? T equals 12. So this would be, you could also restate this as like, um, there were, I guess you could say at time T equals 12, that is when you had 257 gallons of water in the tank. So you can read the table forwards and backwards is basically what this is saying. The next part is a very, very common question on the AP exam. The first two are sort of leading us up to that. Use the data in the table to find an approximation for W prime of 15. We approximated yesterday W prime. This means the derivative or the slope by looking at graphs. But we can also approximate the derivative by looking at a table. Now, when we did it graphically, we would select two points that were close to the value. We would connect them with a secant line, and then we would estimate the value of that slope. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to find a secant line that, oh, there's supposed to be a C in here somewhere. Let's see if I can adjust that. There we go. Let's find a secant line that contains T equals 15. Let's look up here. T equals 15 would lie somewhere in here. So I'm going to use a secant line slope using this data right here. And secant line is average rate of change, or your slope formula looks like this. I'm going to use W of 16 minus W of 12 divided by 16 minus 12. That's the calculation I'm going to use. That would be a secant line slope, the average rate of change between 12 and 16, because 15 is in between 12 and 16. So I'm going to look up at the table and plug those in. So this is 294 minus 257 divided by 4. So let's see what we have here. 294 minus 257, that looks like that is 37 
force using appropriate units. Now this is really interesting. They don't tell me what the units are, but let's take a look at what we just divided. What was W of 16 minus W of 12? Well, that was gallons minus gallons. Well, that would have been gallons. And that, now let's look at the denominator. What were 16 and 12? These were values of T in hours, so this is hours. So this is 37 fourths gallons per hour. Now explain the meaning of your answer. This is an approximation to the rate of change to the water flowing into the tank. So I would say that at t equals 15, I'm going to have to erase some stuff here, there are the rate of change of the amount of water in the tank, and I'm sorry about my writing here, the amount of water in the tank is approximately 37 fourths gallons per hour. So at that time, instantaneously, we are approximating that the amount of gallons, the amount of water in the tank is changing at the rate of positive 37 fourths gallons per hour. That's what we're saying. All right, so now we have to do D, which says use the data to find the average rate of change of W of T over the time period 4 to 20. So to do this, we would do W of 20 minus W of 4 divided by 20 minus 4. This is me showing the computations that lead to my answer. So let's go up to the table and see if we can find those. W of 20 was 327. W of 4 was 184. So that's 327 minus 184 all over 16. So let's see if I can figure that one out. That's going to be about 143, I believe, divided by 16. And this is units. It doesn't say units, but I'm going to put that anyway. Gallons per hour. What does this mean? It doesn't, we don't have to write it down, but at the average rate of change between 4 and 20, at any point between there, the average amount of water, or the average rate of change for the water that's being poured into the tank is 143 sixteenths gallons per hour. All right, last one here. For any time period from 0 to 24, must there be a time when the tank contains 265 gallons of water? This is a I or N I V T question. But that's supposed to be a Q. Wow. Sorry. Anyway, I, I, I do have this problem though. P's, Q's, D's, B's. I really don't know why the English language chose the same letter, just rotated around. It frustrates me, but whatever. I, I didn't get a pick. Let's take a look here. The gallons, this is differentiable, which means this is continuous. That means that we're going to take on all y values from 150 to 357. So let's take a look at what the question is asking. 265. So how would I justify my answer? I would say yes. The function w of t is continuous. How do I know that? Because it's differentiable. So let's see if I can pick two that would contain 265. I'll just, I'll just go from 12 to 16, from 257 to 294. 265, 265 is in between 257 and 294. So by the intermediate value theorem, the amount of water, or sometime between those times, the amount of water in the tank would have to be exactly 265 gallons to be 265 gallons. There, I did it again. I wrote 255. Wow, look at that. Okay, so we're almost done here. I'm going to do, use a calculator for this next part. 
a model for the amount of water in the tank is given by this function. And so we're going to use our calculator to um, find A prime at 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my calculator here. And I have this typed in the y equals. And I'm going to copy this, diamond copy. And I'm going to go to the home screen. And I am going to hit F3. I'm going to go down to differentiate. And I'm going to paste in that function. At the end, I'm going to do comma x. I'm going to close parentheses. And then I'm going to type in evaluated at x equals 15. This will give me the derivative, and it will plug in 15 for me. And that answer is 9. From the calculator, that is 9. So a prime of 15 is 9. You will need to be able to do that on your calculator. And then part G, use the model to find the average rate of change with our calculator between 20 and 4. So what I've done there is I've typed it in Y equals, and we're going to go to our table. We type in 20 and 4. Keep in mind that you want to go highlight the, the Y value to make sure it's not rounding, and this one is rounding. So that's 327.7 repeating. 77777 minus, scroll down to this one, 183.848 repeating. All divided by what? Let me see if you can finish this out. What will be down here? 20 minus 4. That and that, if you calculate that on your calculator, I'm not going to do that right now because the bell's getting ready to ring, and I don't want you to hear that thing. So anyway, that's how we're going to find the, the average rate of change for that model using the calculator. So tomorrow in class, you're going to work on things very similar to this. These are AP questions we're getting ready for already in early September, and I will see you guys then.